Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, today I'm going to finish up with the time frame 600 speaker series of videos uh, that I've been doing and talk not only about them but also the history of the main front and left and right channel speakers here in my home theater. Okay, thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, so yeah, today I'm going to talk about the history of my front main speakers, my left and right channels, and go through, you know, the different speakers I've had here in the home theater, and then kind of finish up with my time frame 600 speakers that I've done, you know, a couple of videos about here. Um, so in a few of my previous videos, like my home theater tour videos, and when I talked about the kind of history of my surround sound setup and why I ultimately have settled on a 5.1 versus like a 7.1 or Dolby Atmos uh, setup videos. I kind of talked about my front channel speakers a little bit here and there. Um, but I'm going to kind of go into depth here today about the history of those speakers. So, like I've said in other videos, when I started off here uh, in this home theater... I obviously started with very little. I didn't have a projector. I didn't have a whole lot of like surround sound speakers. Um, but the first set of speakers that I did bring over, uh, which I mentioned about in my other videos, and you'll probably see some overlap with, with some of that here. I brought over a pair of vintage Pioneer speakers that I had gotten from a garage sale, uh, along with a bunch of other equipment. Uh, and those speakers sat as my front main left and right channels for quite a while, from when I first started with just having a TV here in the home theater, uh, all the way up to when I got my first projector and first projector screen and really, you know, started doing all that. And I had those for quite a while. And throughout the years, I would use those. And then I would get something new and kind of relegate those to either surround channels or just put them into storage, and then I'd bring them back out later on. And then ultimately, several years back, I ended up selling them. And I just felt like I wasn't going to use them, and I didn't really need to keep holding on to them. I, I did for sentimental reasons, because those were the first large pair of tower speakers I ever owned uh, when I got those at that garage sale. But anyways, those started as my first left and right channels that I had for quite a while, and then I had other speakers, you know, as the surrounds behind them. Uh, and then from there, I moved on to buying a set of the Andrew Jones Pioneer Tower speakers, uh, which again, I don't remember the model numbers, but you'll see these pictures pop in here as I talk about them. Uh, but I went and got those. And for a while, those were the rear channels, and then I also flip-flopped them and put them in the front for a while and had a pair as the front left and right. Uh, and I had those speakers, the Pioneer, the Andrew Jones ones, for quite a while. Like I said, they did rotational duty from being the front mains to the rears. And as I said, the older Pioneers would kind of get bumped in and out of there for a while. But after that, I ended up moving the vintage Pioneers kind of into storage and I moved the Andrew Jones Pioneers to the rears and to the side surround, like an Infinity Beta Series or Infinity Alpha Series uh, tower speaker that I, I found a pair of at um, somebody was selling them through Facebook Marketplace years and years ago. And I ended up buying those uh, for not very much money. Um, you know, 50 or $60 for the pair. And I had those as my front channels. I used them for quite a while, and they were the speakers that were initially in here when we first rotated the home theater and remodeled it and put it kind of the way it is now. And then after that, I ended up buying really the only set of speakers I actually bought brand new from the store at full price. And that was a pair of, they were Polk S55 speakers, I believe. But they were brand new for the time, 
Hulk speakers that had like rave reviews and I forget how much I paid per speaker on there. They were on a sale at Best Buy, but they're the only speakers I ever bought full price brand new. Um, cause even the previous pioneer speakers, the Andrew Jones ones, I bought those all through Amazon warehouse deals. I I've bought two at one time and then waited a little bit and bought another two. So they were kind of new, but they were still used through the Amazon warehouse. The Polk speakers were the only ones I bought brand new. And they were they were cool. They had the uh, power port on the bottom to help with bass extension. And they had cool magnetic grills and they were shaped, you know, kind of in an oblong kind of shape. They were, they were neat to look at. I bought those and used those for a while. And sold the Infinity speakers. And ultimately, I ended up not liking them and ended up selling them. Because, I don't know, I just, I didn't like the sound and felt that they weren't as detailed as some of the other speakers uh, that I could find out there. And then, after that, I got on a kick of kind of moving away from tower speakers. So, instead of having the big tower speakers in the front, I decided to play around with bookshelf speakers. So, I went through a variety of bookshelf speakers uh, from that point on that kind of leads me up until I got my DCM speakers that are here. And it started with, I found a pair of, they were Polk, I think the TSI 200 speakers that I found uh, online for a really good deal. And I actually got those based off a recommendation of the Cheap Audio Man uh, channel here on YouTube, I'll link him below, uh, who's pretty popular and talks about a lot of like stereo equipment and, and home theater equipment and stuff. And he did a review of the Polk TSI 100 speakers. And so I found a pair of the Polk TSI 200s, which are a little bit bigger on eBay for a pretty decent price. I can't even remember what I, I paid for them now, but, uh, f for a decent price. And, got them used and got them shipped here. And I started using those for a while and those were pretty good. And, uh, but then, you know, as it is with home theater and me specifically, and I know a lot of people fall into this, there's always that urge to like try and get something a little better and try and get a good deal and whatever. So I was looking around and I actually came across a set of speakers. It was a five, well, actually technically six speaker set. But it was five regular speakers as well as a subwoofer at a home Home Depot, a Goodwill. Uh, it's across from a Home Depot uh, where I went. But a Goodwill location that was selling all five of the speakers plus the subwoofer. And I think it had a receiver at the time for like $75. And it had a JBL center speaker. I don't remember the model. It had two smaller, like, on-wall satellite speakers. I don't remember the model. I ended up selling both of those. But it had a JBL PB10 subwoofer, uh, which is a down-firing subwoofer. And I ended up using that for a while, but it had kind of a glitchy power supply on it. So it would make a buzz and a hum every time it would kick on and off. And it didn't have a standard power supply. It would just kick on and off as the sound got to it. So it became distracting. And so I ended up selling that too. But the main thing that I kept out of them, out of that set, uh, was a pair of JBL N26 Series 2 speakers. And I ended up putting those then as my main left and right and selling the Polk speakers that I had, the TSI 200s. And those JBL speakers were really nice for what they were. Uh, and I really enjoyed those. And that kind of got me on also about getting the JBL Pro line rear surrounds to kind of pair with them, even though I, I couldn't find any at that time to buy that I felt was a good deal and worthwhile in, in doing. But I ended up using those JBL speakers for quite a while. And then I ended up because I always look, you know, on online and everything. I ended up finding a pair of 
Swan Diva 2.1 speakers. And it wasn't just them. It, again, it was a set. It was a pair of the Swan uh, Diva left and right front channel bookshelf speakers. Uh, a Swan Diva center channel. And a Swan Diva like dipole surround speaker set. And I found the entire set for maybe a hundred dollars on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it was someone showing that they were doing a garage sale or a yard sale or something, and these speakers were listed in the listing. And so I ended up driving to the yard sale. They were still there, and I ended up buying them. And those Swan Diva <laughs> speakers, I still own. I, I've never gotten rid of them. Uh, they were my main channels in here. I ended up selling the um, JBL speakers, the N26s. I ended up selling those. And I ended up selling the rear and the center channel of the Swan speakers because I had my other stuff in here that I liked a little bit more than that because they were pretty small and, and not very dynamic. But those Swan Diva left and right channels, I ended up keeping, uh, mainly because they are seemingly worth a lot of money. I've never been able to find actual listings. Every once in a while, I'll see a listing for them online, but they always seem like they're really expensive, and so I've never... Uh, thought about getting rid of them. I still have them in storage in my other uh, part of my basement. I just have held on to them for these all these years. I've just you know decided not to get rid of them. They're just on a shelf in there. But I use those for quite a while. But they were nice. But the problem is the way those are constructed. The tweeter on them is really really like shrill and can hurt your ears with a lot of like high-pitched noises, and after a while, it started to wear on me, so I decided that I was going to get rid of those speakers, and I thought about selling them, but then thought, well, maybe I'll hold on to them, see if I can get a better deal down the road, but I really thought, like, these things are starting to hurt my ears, and they're becoming a little bit too much, you know, on that high end, so I ended up trying to decide, okay, what am I going to replace them with? And I looked all around at different things, and I thought about, well, maybe buying another pair of those JBLs to bring back if I found a deal or something of that sort. But throughout this time, and this is during the pandemic kind of time period, I had started to sell a lot of stuff and build up store credit at the record exchange down in St. Louis that I've talked about in a couple of my other videos. And that's how I ended up finding the uh, DCM time frame speakers that were down there. And as I said in previous videos, I got them on store credit. I got them for $125 for the pair. And I got them for that kind of price because they were selling them to me as damaged. Because the speakers weren't producing, more so the right of the left and right pair, wasn't producing any sound out of the tweeters. You were only getting sound out of the woofer that was on there. And they basically weren't going to sell them to me, but I was able to negotiate with the owner and let them, you know, let me buy them uh, from him at a reasonable price as damage so that I couldn't return them or if they didn't work out, whatever. You know, I was accepting responsibility for buying a damaged item. And did a little research and took it apart and realized that those speakers have a fuse that bridges the tweeters. And that fuse is in there to protect the tweeters because these tweeters are notorious for getting blown out uh, if you give them too much power or crank the volume, you know, too loud. And it blew the fuse that was on there. And I was able to actually just bypass the fuse with some alligator clips and uh, then ultimately like in my other video I replaced all the tweeters uh, that are on these speakers and got them up and running you know to their normal potential and I've kept them in here ever since and I've really in enjoyed having them here and they're a back to a tower speaker design uh, which wasn't necessarily something I you know, wanted to do or not, you know, because I had gone through the bookshelves and I had gone through tower speakers. But they really produce a very, like, neutral 
balanced sound. And that was the whole reason I bought them, because I did a little research while I was down there on my phone on the time frame speakers. And they are. They're very, uh, like, neutral sounding. They produce a, an actual <laughs> uh, decent amount of bass. More surprising than what you would think uh, would come out of those speakers, considering the size of the woofer that's on there. It's not that big. Um, but they produce, you know, a decent amount of bass. There is good separation between, you know, the bass and the mid and the tweeter on there. Uh, also, those secondary tweeters that are on the rear of the speakers produce a, a nice kind of uh, diffuse kind of like spacious effect uh, coming out from the rear of the speaker. And they're actually, you know, really nice. And, and Definitely a good bargain in value for what I paid for them uh, when I bought them. And even though they're a tower speaker and I was kind of onto like bookshelves and stuff, they're probably, you know, some of the best speakers I've owned for the front stage. Because all the other ones that I've had prior to this had some sort of like no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say issue, but I guess kind of an issue or some sort of sort of like quirk with them. So those old pioneers, way back, the first ones I had, they were vintage and they were cool to look at, but they were like a low quality house speaker that were produced at the time from like the late seventies, early eighties. So the audio quality really wasn't that good. You can get some decent bass because those things had like a ten or twelve inch woofer on them, but the rest of it, even though it had like a bunch of mid ranges and looked cool to look at didn't really provide a lot of like mid-level and upper level clarity it was pretty muddy once you got past the bass and the pioneer andrew jones speakers i replaced them with had a similar issue it didn't have a whole lot of bass output and weren't excessively clear in the mid and the higher ranges uh whereas the infinity speakers that then followed those were really clear in the high end uh, range, but the low end wasn't there. And even with the subwoofer, the low end would always, you'd always feel this kind of break between the upper registers and then when the sub would have to come in on the low end. Uh, and then a similar <laughs> issue came up with the Polks as the first two sets of speakers, the two Pioneers. It had a decent amount of bass on those Polk speakers with that power port. But again, the mid-range and the upper ranges would tend to be muddied and, uh, you know, sibilant and not clear. And those were not very sensitive, so you had to give them a lot of, like, power to, like, power them. And then you're turning the volume way up, which caused more of those problems. And then following that, you know, the Polk TSI 200 bookshelves were not bad. But again, they were they didn't really have any bass, so you pretty much had to use subwoofers almost exclusively for the bass on those. And then following that, another kind of similar issue, those JBL N200 or N26 series speakers had pretty good high end because they were horn loaded tweeter, uh, decent kind of you know bass levels on them. But again, still had to primarily use a sub. But the problem was my center channels didn't have horn-loaded speakers on them, horn-loaded tweeters on them. You always got kind of that weird, you know, timber or timbre, whatever, effect between the two. And then, to kind of round it off, those Swans Diva speakers, again, didn't have a whole lot of bass. The upper levels were clear, but they were so, like, shrill and so, like, overpowering that it would start to hurt your ears with really high-level uh, you know, higher pitch sounds. And so finally now, after all these kind of iterations over all these years, these DCM speakers, even though they're vintage, have a very good balanced sound that you can get clear highs and mids, a decent amount of bass coming out of them, but they're not overly dominated by the upper registers or lower registers. And they have that cool diffuse, you know, kind of sur surround effect. On there, And especially since I replaced all the tweeters uh, that I had in my other video and put all the new tweeters on there, uh, these speakers sound great. And they're definitely, you know, something that I've really enjoyed having here in my home theater. And 
really, I don't have any plans on replacing uh, them unless I found, you know, like one of my end game kind of speakers that I would want to replace them with, which I don't think I'm going to find anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, so they're definitely worth it. And I kind of reoriented them where I stacked my subs and put them on top and stacking the subs just kind of helps the output for the subwoofers. doesn't really give you a more neutral bass level, but it adds, you know, just more volume to it. And even though they're raised up higher, they're more mid-level with my projector screen. And I think that they, you know, work pretty well in that environment. So, uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of a history of my front, left, and right uh, speaker setup. I don't think I left anything out there. I mean, maybe I, I forgot something real early on but that I can't remember. But I'm almost positive that covers all my main left and right channel speakers over the years. And I've done a lot of, like, rotating and moving things from the front to the rear and the rear to the front over the years just to experiment and see what I like, you know, there. But uh, that pretty much, I think, covers the history of my front left and right channels. Uh, so with that, you know, I'm going to kind of close out this video here. Uh, as I always do, I want to say thanks, uh, to everyone who's watched, you know, my, my content and subscribed to the channel and, you know, left some comments. I've had some good conversation with different people out there. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long and, uh, be on the lookout. I'm trying to film and get a bunch of different videos done and out into the feed here in the near future. So, uh, again, thanks for everything, and I'll see you in the next video.